In this demonstration, we're going to talk about PINs, the P4 integrated network stack. PINs adds SDN capabilities to Sonic, which is a widely deplo deployed modular open source vendor agnostic network operating system. Adding SDN to Sonic requires three significant contributions. First, we formally specify the SI forwarding plane in P4 for the SDN controller. Next, we add P4 runtime as a remote interface for controlling forwarding entries. And finally, we enhance OpenConfig, GNMI, and GNOI for management and operations, which are already part of Sonic today. PINs provide several benefits to network operators. First, it allows for hybrid control planes that leverage both SDN and embedded control plane programs. It also provides an incremental opt-in path to SDN that can be enabled incrementally on a feature-by-feature -feature basis in Sonic. PINs leverages familiar interfaces that are popular and widely used in, S in the SDN community today, and it enables rapid innovation in the control plane and in the data plane with P4 extensions possible. And finally, PINs enables automated validation of the switch through static analysis and runtime fuzzers. Taking a look at the PINs architecture, we've added a few components to Sonic. On the left-hand side of the screen in white are the existing Sonic components. At the top, we have the Sonic applications, then the application level databases. Below that, we have the switch state service running ORC agent. Below that, we have the ASIC DB, and finally, SyncD and the vendor SI implementations. What we've added are the components in yellow on the right-hand side. We've added a P4 runtime service application, which runs in its own Docker container and communicates with new P4 runtime tables that are part of AppDB. These tables are read by P4 ORC, which converts them into the associated ASIC DB entries. We've also added a response path to immediately inform the controller when an update succeeds or fails. This works similarly to sync mode between the switch state service and SyncD. Next, I'd like to turn it over to Neil Afar, who can explain a little bit, in a little bit more detail how we map between the SI P4 program and the ASIC DB. We have modeled the SI fix routing block in P4, which is split across five P4 tables. The first table matches IP destination and WERF and either sets the next hop group or next hop ID directly. If a group is set, the next hop group table uses WCMP to select the next hop. The next hop table sets the router interface and a neighbor ID, which get mapped to the correct destination port and source and destination MAC addresses in the router interface and neighbor tables. ACLs are the configurable component in the SI pipeline. Here we show the ingress ACL that we use in this demo, which can match on fields in the Ethernet and IP headers, as well as the L4 header. The actions are either copy, trap, forward, or drop traffic, as you might expect. We can also attach counters, meters, as well as uh, set the size of the table for our use case. Because these tables are user-defined, annotations are used to map the P4 fields to their uh, associated SI fields, as you can see in the right-hand side. These annotations allow the runtime implementation to perform translation between P4 entities and SI objects. ACLs are configured on the ASIC when the pipeline is pushed to the switch by the SDN controller, then entries can be added and removed at runtime. SDN enables many use cases that are difficult to achieve using traditional embedded control planes, like SD-WAN, hitless route sequencing, inline network functions, INT and WCMP, which is the focus of this demo. The WCMP application runs on the SDN controller and is able to optimally set weights for the next hub groups in the network fabric. Under normal balanced circumstances, equal cost multipass or ECMP works fine, but WCMP shines when the, when the fabric is unbalanced and asymmetric. In the figure shown in the right hand side, the outgoing link's capacity in spine 2 is two times larger than spine 1, so the SDN controller sets the next hop weight in leaves in such a way that the traffic going to spine 2 is two times larger than spine 1. 
Now I hand it over to Daniele to talk through the control plane for this demo. In this demo, we are using the Onos STN controller to manage the forwarding of packets in a fabric of pins switches. Here you can see the Onos UI and we can see the set of applications currently running on Onos. Onos is running, among others, the LLDP link provider application and the P4 Runtime protocol and driver applications that are used to control pins devices, together with GNMI. As we can see, Onos is also running the pins driver to connect and control the pins switches and the trellis control application. This is the same control application used in ST Fabric and it is in charge of controlling forwarding in the fabric. Trellis control won't directly install flow entries on the switches, but via the flow objective abstraction can program devices exposing different pipelines. In the case of pins, we are using the Psy.p4 pipeline, and the Psy pipeline application is used to translate the flow objectives into actual flow entries pushed to the devices via the P4 runtime protocol. To control devices in Onos, we can push the network configuration via the Onos REST APIs. This contains information like the management address to reach the switches on the management network. Once the configuration is pushed, Onos connects to the devices via the P4 runtime protocol. After that, it starts to generate LLDP packets thanks to the link discovery application to auto-discover links between devices. Onos can also discover hosts by trapping ARPS packets on the switches as the host sends them. From Onos, we can see the flows that are being installed on the pins devices. As we can see, we have a number of WCMP groups, router interfaces, next ops, and route entries that Trellis control via the flow objective and pipeliner system is pushing to the devices. In Onos, we can also see the structure of the pipeline exposed by the device, where we can see the different tables exposed by the device that Onos can control. Now I will hand it over to Don to show you sonic details and generic traffic in the fabric. Hi, I'm Don Newton and I'm part of the PINS team and today we'll be showing you both equal cost and weighted cost multi-path forwarding using P4 Runtime to configure the pathing. We have built an unbalanced 2x2 two two cloth fabric for this demo. By unbalanced I mean that one leaf is 400 gig switch and the other is a 100 gig switch. This is, this, this is mirrored in the spine as well. We're using T-Rex to generate traffic connected to the 400 gig leaf switch, and we'll be looking at both equal and weighted cost multipath configurations. For this demo, we will have a single 400 gig link going to one of the spines and two 50 gig links going to the other. Sonic holds its runtime configuration in a Redis database, and entries that come in via the P4 runtime interface will be prefixed with P4RT colon. Here we see an entry for a slash 24 route, and if we look at the keys, we see that it is pointed to a multipath group. If we expand the group, we see that there are three links with equal weighting. Now we'll start up T-Rex to generate some load across our fabric. In this demo, we will be sending approximately 16 gigabit of traffic to a range of UDP ports to facilitate hashing and using the standard iMix packet size distribution. The load from the T-Rex is coming in on Ethernet 244. If we look at the counters, we see the load being spread more or less evenly across all the northbound interfaces, but since one interface is 400 gig and two to our 50 gig, the link utilization is quite different. As the traffic increases, our two 50 gig links will start dropping packets while our 400 gig link will be running at maybe 10% utilization. This is not ideal. Now we'll reset our demo and this time aim for approximately the same utilization across the three links. Since we have one 400 gig interface going to one spine and two 50 gig links going to the other, a more reasonable weighting would be eight, one, and one. Now we'll start the traffic again and look at our counters. Again, all the load is coming from Ethernet 244, but this time if we look at the northbound interfaces, we see the link utilization is roughly equal. This means we should be able to fully utilize our fabric 
without having to worry about dropping packets until we've overloaded the fabric itself. To summarize, PINS brings SDN capabilities to the Sonic 2021-11 release. We showed you how we can use SD Fabric and ONOS to program the routing tables with WCMP on top of a common, well-defined SI P4 program that enables interoperability across disparate hardware. The PINS working group has been hard at work for the past two years, and we're excited to share the MVP of PINS with the broader Sonic community.